Hey guys, it's Katie here with Life Mundane. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I just wanna take a quick second to thank you guys for showing up. Thanks for checking out our channel. Here we talk about everything homeschooling, home management, and parenting, and talking about making the most of those little moments because those mundane moments are what life is really made of, and you don't wanna miss out on those opportunities. I am a second generation homeschooling mom of six kids, and today we're gonna to be talking about second grade curriculum. I'm gonna be showing you everything that we're doing and talking about some adaptions that we've made to make this the best homeschool year for my second grader. So let's get started. I want to let you guys know that my second grader is my superhero. She is fantastic. She was born with a genetic disorder called 22Q 11.2 deletion syndrome. It has caused a myriad of different health issues that have directly impacted her education, but this girl keeps fighting on. She always has a smile on her face, and even though she had 16 surgeries before her sixth birthday, has fought a long battle with hearing loss and trying to figure out the perfect hearing aids for her on top of just recently being diagnosed with juvenile arthritis, she continues to fight on and it impacted her school directly between the hospital stays and just the uh, not having the right hearing aids. It's hard to learn to read when you can't hear yourself. So these things have definitely caused her to be on different levels for different subjects. But I want to encourage you guys because you may be thinking right now, I don't have a child with special needs. So why do I need to hear how she does her curriculum for a second grader? I wanna encourage you to check this out because I'm gonna show you guys the specific ways that I tweak the curriculum that she needs to fit her specific needs. And you can use these same things, even if they're not the same curriculum or the same exact adaptions, you can see how I kind of think through this process and how I make these adjustments so that you can do the same for your child. I hear from a lot of those, especially that are coming from the public school system and starting homeschooling for the very first time. I'm so excited you guys are here, but I know that it can be a new concept to think of a child being in different grade levels for different subjects. We tend to think that they are all one grade level and my children have been held back at certain, certain children have been held back at certain years because that was necessary, but that's only if they could not handle the vast majority of what was done in that year, or I felt like it was better for their development. I feel like it's a lot easier to hold a child back in kindergarten than it is in the older years, but I'm open to it. It's not something I would rule out, but I would encourage you instead to think and consider the option of maybe having your child in splintered subjects, doing maybe something below grade level in math or reading and having them be on grade level for spelling and science and history, and then maybe being above grade level on something else. You have that flexibility to work with your child and where they are at, and we just wanna encourage forward motion. I wanna encourage my kids for progress. And it's okay that they're not all linear because how many of us truly are when we think about the skills that we even have? We have things we're great at and things we struggle with. Our kids are the exact same way and we shouldn't expect them to be on the same level developing at the same time. So getting off my soapbox, I'm excited to show you guys her second grade curriculum. The first thing we will start with is math. We use for her math lessons for a living education. This is such a gentle but good approach to math. I have done a full curriculum review if you guys wanna check it out. You can see the video up above, but it teaches through stories. So your child at the beginning of the week is gonna have a story they're gonna do with you, you're gonna read it, and then they have a series of activities they're gonna do. They have different um, worksheets, but they're very simple. This is one day's worth of work. This is one day's worth of work. Like when we're dealing with time, you have one page of clocks that you're dealing with, not 10, not 25 problems. Here, this may look like a lot. This is towards the end of book two, but this page is all one page. So you're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six problems that they're gonna do for the day. This has been a real blessing for her. It gives them just enough repetition, but makes it very simple and easy for her to digest. She actually finished level one um, pretty early on in this year and is actually about a third of the way through 
through book two already. So she will finish off book two, but that'll probably be sooner than later. And then we have to decide what to do. Do we go to book three on math lessons for living education, or do we move to teaching textbooks three, which is what all my older kids did. She would love to be like her older siblings and do everything they do, but I'm not sure if that's the best fit for her because this has been working so well and she tends to struggle a little bit more with computer-based stuff. So what do we do? How do we decide? I'm gonna let you know a little secret. When it comes to your special needs kiddos, especially, but even for your other kids, be careful and be aware of planning too far ahead. I'm a planner. I'm an information junkie. I live off this. If I could plan my whole homeschool year all year long and never actually have to get to the work, I would be totally fine with that. <laughs> but I have to remember that, especially with my kiddos who struggle, that planning a year in advance and thinking super far ahead is not always the best plan for them. I found taking chunks of three to six months at a time to be the best way to do it. It takes the pressure off the child. I don't go out and purchase curriculum for like the next book and the book after because I'm not sure if that's still gonna be working for them at that time. So instead, we just take it one step at a time. So we have this book, we will finish this book whenever we finish it. I'm sure we will finish it this year at the pace that she's going and the way she's really grasping it. She's currently able to do more than one lesson or one page a day. Um, which is more what's divided for her. So awesome. I'm excited. We're going to go faster. But when she's done with it, about two weeks before she finishes this book, I will assess where she's at. We may try a little bit of the teaching textbooks three because we already own it because I bought it for her siblings. We might try a sample of that, but if that doesn't work, then we will just go ahead and order book three and we will make that decision on a case by case basis in the moment. It makes the planning a little more challenging. I do plan for the whole year for my other kiddos, but I have found this to put less pressure on her. It has me spending less money and it has been the best fit for us to just take the pressure off of figuring out the whole thing. And that brings me to her reading because it's the same thing. We've been using Happy Cheetah Reading. If you guys haven't checked out my video, be sure to check it out. This is a new reading curriculum put out by Sunlight and it has been a godsend. It has been so wonderful. We are using it with our remedial narrator and also with her. Um, she is currently finishing up pre the pre-reading workbook that comes right before this one. She's done the whole workbook in about three months. She's done the whole workbook in about three months and she will start book one and I'm confident we will finish book one next year. Will we get to book two? I don't know. I have it. I have it because they send it to me. I don't normally go ahead and buy it ahead of time, but I don't know if we'll get into book two. Maybe we'll get into book three. Maybe we'll just barely finish book one by the skin of our teeth. The point is to go at their pace, at their learning level, and to just take a deep breath. It is so hard because we feel the pressure from the world of other people's expectations being put on us. Maybe it's that well-meaning relative that constantly quizzes your child every time you meet him. Maybe it's just you looking at Instagram and Facebook and seeing what other kids are doing and you're struggling with that. I understand, I get it. I really want you to know that struggle is a real thing for me and most moms every single day. But we have to remember that we shouldn't punish our kids for the pressure that we're feeling, right? We did this, we homeschooled so that we could go at their pace. And that pace, no matter how slow or how fast it is, it's gotta be respected. There is such a thing as, you know, discipline, self-discipline issues where they need to learn to, to persevere through something, or maybe there's a little bit of laziness going on. And those things do need to be addressed. But if your child truly cannot handle the pace of going faster, then don't make them go faster. Just Take it moment by moment. So that being said, we are going to just see where we go. This curriculum is a great reading curriculum, but it also includes grammar, a very gentle introduction to grammar and to writing and to spelling. And I am excited about that. But those two books are the primary book work that she has. She, she will be joining us for history as we do the story of the world book three and for science as we do apologia astronomy. But those are things that she listens to and absorbs what she can, but I don't worry about um, quizzing her on it as much or anything like that. With Story of the World, the nice thing is it's all story-based and in the back, they have a ton of coloring sheets and activity sheets. Now my older kids are gonna be doing map work and hands-on activities and she will be welcome to join in on any of that that she wants to, but we are 
focused primarily on that. I just want her to learn as much as she can that way. We also will make sure that in this, they give you a selection of books that you can get from your library that complement the different lessons. We will always make sure to get at least one picture book to go along with each lesson so that her and my two little preschoolers can enjoy that as well. With the science book, she will listen in all the lessons and participate as she can. She really, you would be shocked at how much younger kids can really absorb and get this. This curriculum is designed for first through sixth grade, so it's nice because it covers the whole span of my kiddos, but um, sometimes it can be a little bit wordier for her in particular, but she still grasps so much more than you would imagine. We did go ahead and get her a junior workbook this year. Um, even though I know some of the activities might be a little bit tough for her, I don't know that she's going to be able to do the crossword puzzles. Um, that is probably going to be a little bit outside of her range, but they do have fun games in here. They have coloring sheets, which she can totally do. They have lap books, which I'm excited about. So they have ones where you're making a flip book of Saturn and all of its rings. They have some copy works, which she'll probably do the copy work, but like the note taking for the different lessons, we probably will just skip and either let her um, draw in a sketchbook, something that she's learned about. She did well with that last year or um, just verbally tell me, and that's fine too. So when you're, when you're talking about her primary curriculum, besides what we're doing as a group for Bible history and science, you're talking about math and you're talking about a really thorough reading program that covers most of her language arts. That means that her book work ends up only being about 30 minutes, about to an hour's worth of book work. That doesn't seem like a lot. And I know it can be shocking and overwhelming to think, is that enough? But let me tell you, it really is. Because not only is she doing that book work, but she is absorbing the science and history. She is playing. She is learning through those things. She is uh, watching her siblings. She will sit in when we do our IEW for our writing for my older kids. And when we do our Grammar Galaxy for some of the older kids, she'll sit in on those lessons and she'll listen because she just wants to be with them. And whatever she picks up or desires to do, she will do with them. But I don't officially assign it to her. If she ends up taking on the bulk of it and really wants to be in involved, I have no problem getting additional student books for her or things like that, but I just take the pressure off for feeling like she has to. I did want to be more intentional this year though with her down bed because she does finish school quite a bit sooner than her older siblings. And that's always frustrating for her because she wants them to come play and they're like, no, we've got to finish her school. So I wanted to give her a few more structured activities she could do at the table or around the living room, wherever we are for school during the school day that would help reinforce some skills that she could use a little bit of work on, but that don't take so much time that they add an extra burden, if that makes sense. So one thing that we are doing this year is the Adapted Morning Binder. Um, if you guys have followed Mrs. D's Corner on Facebook or on YouTube, if you haven't, you should go check it out. I'll link it above and down below. But um, she makes this amazing binder, and I will say these are printables and you have to assemble it, and it does take a decent amount of assembly. But once you have it done, you have it set for life, which is amazing. So it works on things like your address and working on your phone number, your birthday, and it has these movable pieces. Now for this, this is all personal information. So I've taken all the movable pieces out, but I will show you an example here. So this has got, um, I can match my letters. And so it's got all the capital letters up here and it's got them all down here on Velcros and she's going to match them with the right letter, right? And then you could have them do the same, but have them match the uppercase to the lowercase letters. She also has activity sheets in here for tracing. So they can take a dry erase marker and practice tracing these different lines. They can practice tracing shapes. They can practice tracing all of their color names or the names of different numbers. They have identifying numbers. I haven't finished fully setting all this up. I'm still putting the Velcro in and I ran out, so I had to order some more. And, um, and it has even trickier things like working on tally marks and other things like that. She has color matching where they'll match up the color. And here they're matching up the color name with the color tile. I love the fact that she has a lot of different ways to adapt this. So they start out where they match the tile with the color name and they're color coded. So she's going to match the green with the green. But after she masters that, we're going to take these off and I have, I have all black tiles that she will then try to match those up where she's actually reading it. 
but it gets them used to it and it works them in a gentle way. If you guys wanna see a complete flip through once this is done, let me know down in the comments. I would be happy to show that to you guys. Um, but I think this will be a great thing. There'll be certain pages that she is assigned to do every single day. I want her to work on her address and her phone number and name. She's really close to all of that. She knows how to write her name. She knows how to write her first name perfectly. She knows how to write her last name pretty well, but her middle name, she doesn't have much experience with. Her birth date, she knows the date, but actually writing it in numerical form or writing it in full form with the month, the day, and the year, she sometimes struggles with um, switching those around. So we're just gonna kind of work on reinforcing those things. So we're gonna do that for one. We're also gonna be using the Usborne Wipe and Clean Dry Erase books. I have a huge collection of them and love them. And they have them on spelling and math. They have them on multiplication and grammar concepts, not just younger kid concepts, okay? And so I have a whole collection of those and those are great because they can use them over and over again. They don't take a ton of oversight for you to just watch over them because if they make a mistake, they can just erase it and start over. Some are tracing, some are fill in the blank. They have different activities involved. So we're gonna have those available more on a rotation of just, hey, let's pick up an extra activity or two. Another thing that we will be doing for her, and this is something she especially requested slash I think would be uber helpful for her, is that we will be doing sign language this year. I don't know whether we will save it for January when we typically introduce some kind of fun, unique thing for each child, or if we will start out the year with it. But I found a free ASL program, American Sign Language program, online that can be done. And I think her and I are gonna go through it together. Will the other kids learn it? Probably, but I'm not going to officially assign it. So it's something special that we can do together. But she does struggle. While she does have a bone anchored hearing aid and can hear a lot better than she could before, she still struggles in crowded situations. And masks, oh my goodness, masks have made life so much harder for her because she seriously relies on reading lips. And so it has been a super big challenge. So we have talked about her wanting to learn sign language, but now it's becoming a little bit more of a necessity. So we are going to really focus on that more with her. And then if it goes well, we'll extend it to the whole family. Um, although I'm sure she'll be eager to teach them all of her different signs. Even if we don't fully 100% sign, we would like to use more sign language to assist her in the day-to-day -day tasks. So we're excited to do that. I will share more about the program that we're using once we give it a try and I let you guys know, but you guys can find the link to that program and all of these other resources down in the description below. Um, and I hope, I hope you guys will check out my website. It is lifeinthemundane.com. And if you are brand new to homeschooling, as I know many of you guys are, be sure to check out the How to Start um, how to start homeschooling tab on the webpage. This is a brand new section of my webpage and it shares with you guys a bunch of resources ones that I have made, but also ones from others, uh, other great websites that I have linked onto there that you guys can use to help you get started with this homeschooling journey. Know that you're not alone. Reach out if you need help. Be sure to stick around as I'm sure there are other videos here that could be of assistance and help for you. And I hope this is encouragement to you to help you to personalize your child's education to them. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.